Hey, this is cute. Nothing like a baby bird stretching its wings. What a lovely springtime spectacle. Even though that's not its own nest, this baby cuckoo made itself right at home. After its mom plopped it down here for another bird to raise. Oh look, he's hugging the egg whose mother laid it in the nest she built for it. Oh no, that's not a hug. Intruder cuckoo babies throw the eggs that belong here out of the nest so that their new foster mother will feed them instead of her own babies. Cuckoos don't want competition. Yeah, looks like cuckoos are jerks right from the beginning, as newborns. So, how else do cuckoos trick other birds? Cuckoo birds take such advantage of other birds that some scientists classify them as parasites. Their parasitic behavior doesn't end in babyhood. Grown cuckoo mother birds do a number of tricky things to try and dominate their neighbors. Instead of building a nest, sitting on their eggs and raising their chicks, cuckoo mothers lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Talk about negligent mothers. You're probably wondering why the foster mothers don't recognize the cuckoo babies as not being their own. Well, cuckoos have been tricksters for so long that they've evolved to make their eggs resemble their neighbors' eggs. Not only that, but cuckoo chicks resemble their host's chicks as well. If there are a variety of birds with a variety of eggs living close to the cuckoos, individual female cuckoos can lay different colored eggs to match their neighbor's eggs. And it doesn't stop there. Mother cuckoo birds often choose nests in dark places so that the hosts can't really see how different they look. Another trick is to lay an average looking egg that doesn't look exactly like all of the neighboring eggs but can pass for most of them because it has a definite resemblance. So these parasitic cuckoo birds make others raise their cuckoo chicks as if they were their own. Which means that the energy and the resources that the host birds would otherwise use for their own chicks instead goes to the cuckoo chicks. So far, so bad. But researchers have recently discovered more. Apparently, the cuckoo has a trick up its wing that we had no idea about. According to a study from Nature Ecology and Evolution, cuckoo mothers have learned to copy the chirps of other birds, ones that prey on the host birds. For example, after laying its egg in a reed warbler's nest, a cuckoo then cried out like a sparrow hawk, which eats reed warblers. Doing this scares the reed warbler mother away from her own nest, allowing extra time for the cuckoo egg to stay in the warbler's nest and develop. Wow, cuckoo birds are cold and cruel from the get-go. Now let's look at the other side of the spectrum with a bird that pulls out all the stops in the name of love. It'll warm your heart right up. What if I told you that every one of those sounds was actually being made by a little Australian bird with a knack for impersonations? Meet the Australian lyrebird. Lyrebirds have the bizarre ability to accurately mimic the sounds of their habitats. Most of their mimicry is of other avian species, but they've also been known to expand to more human sounds like hammers, camera shutters, power drills, even the human voice itself. How did these birds become master impressionists? Do they rehearse like humans? Is there any benefit to this skill? And what does it all have to do with their sex lives? Humans can potentially make a living by mastering one really good impression. But lyre birds have to be a little bit more ambitious. The mimicry of other sounds is learned from older birds rather than directly from their mimicked models. These skills are put to use most every winter when the males are trying to attract new mates. Not unlike humans, there's a preference for males who know more songs. So the mimic sounds are just another way that males add to their repertoire to increase their chances with the ladies. A diverse assortment of songs may indicate an older male with proven longevity and survival skills, good traits to pass on to your offspring. 
Informed by excellent hearing and memory, these uncanny impersonations are produced by a vocal organ called the syrinx. It's similar to our larynx, except it splits off into two pipes leading into the lungs, allowing these birds to create two songs at the same time. Lyrebird syrinxes are less complex than most songbirds, but somehow result in greater vocal complexity. And if you think their singing voice is impressive, just wait until you see how they can dance. When a male lyrebird has eyes for a female, he engages in a bizarre mating ritual that makes humans' habits look somewhat normal. Atop a little stage made of dirt, the male puts on an elaborate display of song and dance. As he vibrates his feathers, he accompanies each song with a unique choreography, achieving a level of sophistication usually reserved for humans. Only the males with the most impressive feathers and songs and dances are allowed to mate and pass on their genes. When lyrebirds aren't spending their time performing for each other, they actually play a vital role to the Australian forest ecosystem. Every time they go searching for food, they help prevent forest fires. Their big feet dig through the ground, destroying rotten logs and removing debris from the forest floor that could become fuel for wildfires. These birds are so much more than the weird noises they make. They shed a light on the lengths that many creatures on Earth will go to just to find love. Some of them swipe left and right on a smartphone, while others put on an elaborate song and dance. But here's a bird that might be smart enough to actually use your phone. Are crows the smartest birds in the world? They lost out on looks, but nature has given your average garbage-loving crow other advantages. Behind that mean-looking face is the largest brain on the planet, in proportion to its weight. A crow's brain is 2.7% of its body weight, but your brain is only 1.9% of your total weight. Loser! Here's 007. He's having his first go at an eight-step puzzle. After being captured, 007 spent three months learning each step. But for his final test, he'll have to figure out the specific order in which to perform all these steps to reach a tasty piece of meat. Bingo! That's a clever bird. How does their intelligence help wild crows? And why would they need such big brains? Stay tuned as we dive into the mind of a crow. Caledonian crows, like 007, show problem-solving skills well beyond what survival might demand. They fashion tools out of twigs and sticks to reach food. And they can be precise when choosing natural materials to make tools. In 2014, scientists at the University of Auckland, New Zealand, tested new Caledonian crows' understanding of water displacement. They found that these crows could be as clever as an average five to seven-year-old human. And researchers at the University of Tübingen in Germany discovered that crows even understand the concept of zero. The crows understood zero as a specific numerical value that's less than one, and not just as a simple something versus nothing situation. But we still don't know how their mathematical ability could be helpful to wild crows. I mean, they either have food or they don't. But that's precisely what makes an animal uniquely intelligent. Primates often use their intelligence to entertain themselves with puzzles and games. And it seems so do crows. Scientists are still unsure about whether this guy here is having some certified fun, but come on, how could anyone not? Problem solving happens in the prefrontal cortex for primates. Crows don't have this exact structure but they do have a higher concentration of neurons in a similar area of their brain that could be the likely source of their intelligence. But can you guess why crows evolved to be this smart? The social intelligence theory offers the most compelling explanation so far. Primates are highly competitive, and keeping tabs on the politics of everyone's messy love lives is essential to surviving. But for the monogamous crow, it's the teen years that offer the biggest challenge. Young crows hang out in highly aggressive and competitive juvenile gangs. And like many kinds of gangs, things can get, well, quite rough. The more clever a crow is, the more likely it is to make it to adulthood. Crows make impressive use of their hard-earned social intelligence. As annoying as that caw might sound, crows have a complex language, complete with regional dialects. An immigrant crow will try to fit in by learning the local language and copying accents too. 
When a crow dies, the whole flock gathers for what looks like a funeral. These funerals are equal parts mourning and crime scene investigation. All right, what killed this crow? And how can we avoid similar deaths in the future? These are important questions to the funeral party. Even if there's ample food at the death site, no crow will eat it. So maybe we have misunderstood this clever bird. But if you feel tempted to chase away the next crow you see, think again. This clever avian will remember your face for up to five years. It will also be sure to warn other crows about you. And as researchers from the University of Washington who use caveman masks to trap and band crows found out, the next time you approach a flock, you could be mobbed and scolded. As time passes, more crows will have learned to respond negatively to you. And to be fair, it's not just the bad stuff that they remember. A young girl in Seattle who's been feeding crows in her backyard has won their little crow hearts. They routinely leave her various trinkets and treasures in the bird feeder as a thank you. They even left her the best side of a best friend's necklace. And I can't continue on because my heart just melted and I died. Crows have extraordinary intelligence and incredible social skills. And that's what makes them crazy creatures.